Welcome to the Gold Mines Podcast. I'm Deborah Lightfriss and your host today. On today's program, we have Marilyn Sendry back for part two on the mentorship program. Welcome back, Marilyn. Thank you, Deborah. I'm happy to be here. And to, as we go into March, we're celebrating International Women's Day, actually, today. So may we know them. May we be them and may we raise them. Salute to all the wonderful women out there. So Marilyn, uh, to kick off part two, uh, we left our last discussion on how you develop the mentorship program. There's an old business metaphor and it's, it goes a little something like this, from the cradle to the gate. Basically, Marilyn, that just means from the birth of a product or uh, a service to the end mm -hmm. and when it goes out the door. So can we revisit for our listeners today the birth and the design of your mentorship program? How did you attract the mentees? How do you connect with them? And the end result, the well, certification. The program was born out of a suggestion that was made that a mentor program might benefit some of our managers, our new managers, uh, managers that want to develop some more skills and abilities. Um, so being that I had 18 plus years in those roles out in the field, um, I was asked if I'd be interested in developing the program. Uh, so I came in really not knowing a lot about what I was going to do. I knew what I knew and what I could talk to people about and teach them about but how do you actually make that into a formal program within a corporation? Um, so the first thing I did was some research, of course. What does a, a corporate mentorship program look like? How do you get the mentees? How do you set up the program? How do you prepare the mentees? Um, where do you go with goals? How do you make sure the goals are being met? How do you make sure that that is a successful program? Um, so at that point, we decided what mentor mentees I would be mentoring. We started with just a handful, and that was two and a half years ago. Now I've mentored over 78, uh, I think it's up to 79 people now, and it's been a very successful program. Um, other, some of the things that I started doing was uh, learning how to uh, help the mentee define goals. If you don't have goals, you don't know where you're going. So we had to figure out what we were going to do as far as goals. And I recommend only one to three, no more than three. Um, the goals have to be smart goals, as we all know what those are, very specific with a timeline, um, with a, a result in mind, what does success look like? So that's the first conversation I have with the mentees. As time went on, we learned that the mentorship program could be of value to other folks in the company. Um, so about a year and a half or so into it, we opened it up to others, uh, not just managers, but those on a track to become a manager or an assistant manager, those who were looking for a career path, someone who just wanted to spend some time talking about time management, skill development, basically a brain to pick. And I, I was happy to do that. And that's how the program grew to the number that it is now. Currently I'm mentoring 20 people we meet once a week for 30 minutes. As time goes on, we evaluate where we add to our goals. We're evaluating um, the progress to goals weekly. What are your challenges? What are your successes? Give me some examples of how you see you're progressing through your goals. Uh, it's been um, a very good experience for myself as a mentor. Um, there's learning on both sides. I've gained a lot of knowledge and skills that I can pass on to future mentees. And it's just, it just seems to be such a value all the way around, not only to the mentor, the mentee, the organization, um, our social cultures. There's a lot of value that you bring to the table when your corporation does have a mentorship program. Wow. So. We understand that building rapport is the best way to get the most out of the mentorship program. And I think by now, my listeners out there, you could see why Marilyn is an absolute amazing mentor. So Marilyn, can I ask you just one more sure. question? What do you personally get out of all of this? Like what makes you wake up every day and say, yep, I can't wait to get in there. 
I, I have the best job ever, and at this point in my career, I say it's the last step in my career. Um, I just love coming to work knowing that I get to talk to people all day long and help them and teach them and learn from them and coach them and counsel them. And if I can make their day a little bit better or their job a little bit stronger for them through skill development, if I can help the company with retention goals and recruiting goals, that's a lot of give back um, and a lot of value that puts me in a place where I just feel that I have the best job ever. It's, there's so much that I could say about what I do and I say it all the time and everybody's probably tired of hearing listen, of listening to it, uh, but it really is so much, provides so much value to everyone having this program. So Marilyn, if anyone out there would like to, uh, you know, contact you, can you tell them, I know you're on LinkedIn. Correct. Um, if you need some advice, Marilyn's open. So tell them where to, how to get a hold of you, Marilyn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if someone wants to um, connect with me on LinkedIn, um, that would be great. And I'd be happy to talk to you more about how the program came to be, how I worked through it and developed it. Um, with the help of, of course, our training department um, here at the Reserve Network, that everybody's so supportive, um, and I could not have done that without them. But that's that's probably the best way. Um, certainly, if you wanted to go that route, um, I would get back to you. So, lastly, Marilyn, as always, I like to close with my Deborahism. If you cannot see where you are going. Ask someone who has been there, example, hitch your wagon to a star.